Yeah, that's right. You saw the title of this thumbnail. I have on my hands a Ryzen 4070. I have it. It's right here. And today we're going to benchmark it, look at its specs and uh, tell you what I think because I've tried it out myself and I, I got to say AMD and Nvidia collaborating like this and just being a team player has really caught me off guard in a good way. And I'm just excited for the innovation that's going to happen here. I don't see how Intel will be able to survive and, and combat this level of performance. I've been testing and playing with it a little bit and it's a little wild boys. It's it's powerful like it's crazy strong it kind of looks like this it has like a ryzen ihs yes yeah, it's, it's the ryzen nvidia 4070 i want to show you all the specs of this card show you how it slaps in benchmarks and uh kind of just rule over you guys that I, I do in fact have the ryzen 4070 i actually have it here with me right now and yeah i gotta say dude this card is really powerful i've kind of deleted it so you guys can see exactly what it looks like it's just that ryzen ihs eight memory modules and those are four gigabyte modules first i'll kind of show you guys i had a ryzen 4070 and mine was an msi model it just looked like this and yeah a lot of the specs on this thing aren't even released yet um nvidia and amd just kind of collaborated behind closed doors and this is just an engineering sample i got and it, it doesn't perform like one guys but it's definitely just kind of that red headed stepchild but it's actually really powerful and msi was the aib for this i don't know why it wasn't like a custom design like by nvidia but yeah it's just the msi board and under the hood is just this little thing we got here so yeah guys let's get into the spec sheet for this you know we can finally put the ryzen 4070 to rest and get its real specs so it's the NVIDIA Ryzen RTX 4070. I pulled it up on Tech Power Up here. And dude, I got to say, guys, it's really powerful. It's supposed to release on the September 27th, which it's that's not even out yet. So I guess I'm really lucky but with having this engineering sample here. But it's built on the NV102 die, which we haven't even seen yet. Totally, totally powerful, boys. And it's on one nanometer. Who's even fabbing one nanometer right now? I mean, that's crazy. How how am I getting a card on fabbed on one nanometer? I have no idea. But it's kind of a mid-range die, you know, small to big. It's 406 millimeter squared. That's actually bigger than a 4080. So you're getting a lot of silicon for what you have there. And that, this kind of makes sense because it is a Ryzen part with, you know, an RTX card. So I think it has a bit of cores in here. It's not detailed on this sheet because this is GPU-Z but I believe this does have 32 Zen 5 cores on it. Yeah, 32 Zen 5 cores ain't too bad for your GPU. And the way, you know, it has those cores on there so you can actually use this as a computing puck and you don't even need a separate CPU. Um, like you can run your games completely on this card and that frees up your main CPU for doing whatever, like encoding your game or whatever like that. It also has 10 trillion uh, transistors, and that's crazy. I don't, even, I haven't even seen anything with a trillion yet, but this has 10 trillion, and makes sense since it's built on one nanometer. I think that one nanometer is actually um, fabbed with TSMC, and then the the CPU and GPU parts are connected through a silicon interposer with um, Bovaros from Intel. So that's kind of cool. It's running at PCI E 5.0, which we haven't had a card that's done that yet. But definitely, you know, if you're gonna have as much CUDA cores, you know, it's saying 32,768 CUDA cores down here. Yeah, you're gonna need 5.0 for that much performance there. 352 ROPs and 1,024 TMUs. Um, DirectX 12 support, obviously, 1200 fill rate, and texture fill rate is 3,400 gigatexels. Cool, don't really know what all that means, but I it sounds like a high number and, you know, from my results with the 4070, the Ryzen 4070, yeah, it's definitely pretty good. We're getting a GDDR7X from Micron, which is kind of crazy because GDDR7 hasn't even launched yet. But, you know, um, I think AMD and, and NVIDIA just wanted to go all out with this product. And it, this product was really built for the people, I think. It was really built for your average guy that just wants a ton of performance and none of the brand loyalty. Um, you know, he, he doesn't care who he's buying this card from. It just has the best of both worlds. 
And it's kind of funny because this supports DLSS and FSR at the same time. It also supports like, what's that? It has like Radeon Chill, DLSS, like it has access to both softwares, which is kind of cool. NVIDIA has finally given the people what they want with a lot of VRAM. We're getting 32 gigs of VRAM here, which is crazy. And that's all on a 256 bit bus, guys. Um, as I showed you before, this, you know, this card has eight memory modules and each module is actually four gigabytes each and that's gddr 7 x and on a 256 bit bus we're getting 1600 gigabytes a second of memory bandwidth and by based on my math that's 50 gigabit a second and yeah that's blazing fast the i mean the fastest we have right now is what 24 gigabit so that's over double what our fastest speed is now so guys this card absolutely rips and it does all that, it doesn't even show it on here, but it does all that with a TDP of only 200 watts. So it's sipping power. And I can tell you when it was playing games um, on my rig, it actually was super quiet. The fans barely even spin, spun up at all guys. Yeah, so the driver is actually set for September 27th as well, which is weird. So I guess they came out with a driver that they're planning on releasing. And you know, they're kind enough to give me access to all that. Um, I'm not sure why they're so kind to such a small YouTuber, but. I really appreciate the guys over there at NVIDIA and AMD. Yeah, so the GPU clock, you know, and this isn't even its max clock, but it it was it was getting to 3.2 gigahertz in games. And I even pushed this thing as far as 3.5. That was like no issue for it. Um, and then the default clock's 2800. That's that's just your like slow default spec. Um, the memory is 6249 megahertz, but I never really know what to do with that number. I always just use the bandwidth, total bandwidth and gigabit a second. But yeah, and then it supports, you know, all of the check boxes here. That is the specs for the Ryzen or the Nvidia Ryzen RTX 4070. Let's get into the benchmarks here. And I think you guys are going to actually be very blown away with the results. This first game we have up is Cyberpunk. And I got to say, it's 4K, path tracing, everything is maxed out. We do have DLSS on, but look at the frame grade up there. I mean, it's crazy, guys. And it's not missing a beat, as you can see. It looks fantastic. All while the Ryzen 4070 is just sipping power sitting there. And that's probably due to its, you know, 32,000 CUDA cores. I mean, it's kind of crazy. Cyberpunk 2077 is no match for this thing. I mean, it's getting upwards of 400 500 fps here i even see it getting up to 600 at some point but yeah none of you guys have experienced anything like this 400 fps now that is a little bit of frame gen in there but honestly the frame generation tech is so good with the ryzen 4070 it looks native and yeah so cyberpunk is now kind of like a single a game for the ryzen 4070 it's like it, it can run this circles around this game it's super easy but Let's try Black Myth Wukong and see if that makes a difference. Now we're playing Black Myth Wukong here. Everything's maxed out, 4K path tracing. And it's crazy, guys. Still, we're getting 400, 500. <laughs> Wasn't this game supposed to be hard to run? Um, I see it can dip down to 200 there. Ryzen 4070 truly is the best GPU of all time. It's really, nothing even comes close to what this GPU is doing. And even during the cutscene here, getting a lot of FPS. Um, not sure what's going on with that guy, but we can move on to the next game. Our next and final game, Alan Wake 2. Alan Wake 2 maxed out patch racing, all the bells and whistles. And, you know, for some reason, this game's a little bit hard to run. I think we're getting two something, 300. It, it moves kind of fast, but the Ryzen 4070 makes light work of it again. Honestly, guys, any game or application is trivialized with the Ryzen 4070, as you can see here. Even with path tracing and all that, these games are just so easy to run. We're getting hundreds of FPS. This GPU is amazing. Honestly, if you told me it's uh, <laughs> solved world hunger and cured cancer, I would believe you because this GPU really does seem perfect. It has like a perfect bliss to it, I gotta say. Is this worth upgrading to? Are you gonna pick it up? You know, in my opinion, I think it just throws everything out of the water. I know a lot of you are gonna be jealous. There's gonna be some 4090 buyers and 7900 XTX people that are gonna be real jealous of a 70 class product, totally trouncing on their cards. But let me know down in the comments what y'all think. Token Steak, signing out.